Hello and welcome back to the Completely Random Foolishness Podcast. Thank you for stopping by. If this is your first time here, you are in for a treat. And if this is not your first time here, that means you listened to a previous episode and made the decision to come back. So that makes me happy you don't hate me. <laughs> All right, uh, wanna know something funny? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I recorded this whole entire episode and then when I hit save, it, it erased itself. <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I just wasted um, 40 minutes. It's fine. Do it all over again. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Hi, my name is Asia and I'm running away to join the circus. Today's episode is all about my one true love, Ariel Silks. Also, let me throw this in here. If you hear this annoying beeping sound, it's the smoke alarm in my house, which the batteries need to be changed. We've changed it before. We've changed them several times and it seems like it doesn't ever want to stop beeping. But fear not, the smoke, mm, <laughs> the smoke detector, the smoke detector works perfectly because you can cook toast the wrong way in the morning and it screams. It screams, so it's fine. But I'll, uh, I'll have to change the battery soon because it's annoying the crap out of me. I cannot podcast. <laughs> with this noise okay uh, let me explain so when I was in the 10th grade may have been 11th but I'm feeling more like it was the 10th I took biology anyway at the time the show pretty little liars was probably a few seasons in. I'm not really sure you can look that up actually no you can't because you have no year <laughs> you have no idea what year I was in the 10th grade uh, I'm like really getting myself tongue tied here because I've already done this episode. Okay, calm down. All right, um, I hadn't watched the show though because I thought it was stupid. But sitting in biology class one day, my best friend told me to watch it and she gave me several reasons. She said it's so good. And so I sat down and I watched it. And oh my gosh, I was hooked. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, that show was a complete dumpster fire for so many different reasons. Um, including the whole Arya Ezra teacher student thing like that's a mess and uh, the fact that they portray mental illness as evil that's a mess uh, yeah we'll stop there but whoo okay um, but I really loved the character Spencer Hastings and the whole Hastings family I thought they were super interesting I especially love though the actress that portrayed Spencer Miss Troyan Belisario she is great I follow her on Instagram and she posted a bunch of these pictures of herself hanging from the ceiling in a long cloth like material I thought it was cool so I googled hanging from the ceiling in a long cloth like material and as it turns out it's a circus art slash exercise called aerial silks not to be confused with aerial hoops or aerial yoga three different things um but it's probably the very most beautiful thing i've ever seen and i plan to do it <laughs> yeah anyway i told my dad that i wanted to try it um a couple years back and he said uh you're gonna break your neck and he's right he has a point <laughs> to be fair he has a point i'm very clumsy and I have big athleticism. I played tennis, I played volleyball, I played softball, I played basketball, I played so many different sports and the only one I was even remotely okay at was tennis. But I still wasn't good at it, but I liked it though. Um, all of that will change though because this year I am determined to do something cool that makes me challenge myself and step outside of my comfort zone. Basically, I wanna fly, okay? Um, but I did, I put that whole dream on hold momentarily. Well, I was figuring out the whole career and college thing because I said aerial silks is not really that important. Like the classes that I would have to take to do this, they're not close by, they're at least an hour away, if not more. I'm thinking more like an hour and 30 minutes. And that's a long drive to be making to dedicate yourself to make um, when you've got like so much other stuff going on. You gotta work, like you gotta go to school and like you don't have your own car because <laughs> I don't have my own car and um, like and I have to pay for the classes too so like that was another thing I was like I will we'll, we will revisit that later later down the road and so now it's later down the road and I want to try it why why 
I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because a few days ago, I heard for the very first time Pentatonix singing The Greatest Show from the movie The Greatest Showman, and I was left away in circus art all over again. Yeah, that's right. Pentatonix is great. I actually don't know why I've never heard that song before because I feel like it. I feel like I've heard that whoa part at the beginning before, um, but I've never heard like the whole song and it was just so cool. I was listening to it. I was like, what? That's amazing. Anyway, I've never seen though the actual movie, The Greatest Showman. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that a lot of people have problems with it, probably because of uh, the, um, yeah, they said, I don't even know because I haven't, I haven't seen the movie. But I think they said that P.T. Barnum was not actually how he was portrayed, like he was portrayed wrong or I don't know, like they made it seem like he was a better person than he really was. Or maybe they made it seem like he was a worse person than he really was. I don't really know. I just know that a lot of people trashed the movie because of that. Um, I haven't seen it though, so I don't know. But what I do know is that I don't have a problem with pentatonics. That's right, I don't have one problem with them. I also don't have a problem with Panic at the Disco because they recorded a cover of the song too. Cool stuff. Um, Brandon Urie has an amazing voice. And so that song was the coolest I've ever heard about showmanship, ever. I was like swept away. Anyway, disclaimer time. No, I gotta have my disclaimers. I have at least one disclaimer in every episode coming up. Like, I just gotta have them, okay? I am not endorsing animal cruelty, nor am I defending any accusations against circuses or circus people such as P.T. Barnum. But you can't just hate an entire group of people or a group of something because a few nut jobs and fun ruin it for everyone else. Um, I know that the circus has its flaws. I know that in the past there's been people keeping tigers like 16 tigers on a 4x4 cage and not really feeding them um i know that there have been people who have been mistreated by the circus there's been some racist accusations there's like so many things that have been said about the circus but as it is with every group you have your people that are good and you have your people that are just terrible so I'm saying that you can't hate this entire group of circus and just circuses in general because of that. Because there are some that do it right. And to me, the point of the circus is for you to step back from reality just a little bit and witness magic. And like, and not like magic magic, like witchcraft, but like something magical, something just majestic I'll, I'll put it like that something that's out of the ordinary i remember when i was a kid that's the reason i like the circus people think the circus is corny i think it's cool because you can really just step back from your everyday life and you can witness things that are just like amazing and spectacular and just the lights and the sound and everything is just so beautiful anyway all i'm saying is that in addition to running my own film studio, film production studio one day, I also wanna make a fake magical circus that blows people's minds and makes you wanna fly too, okay? I'm a filmmaker, I make up worlds and universes for my stories. I've, I've come up with a school, complete with class schedules and a rule handbook and a lunch menu for the entire month. I just like to make believe and that's what the circus is. It's a lot of pretending and making believe even though they're really doing stuff you're feeling like you're in this whole different world. And so in honor of the gift that is circus art, and in honor of the gift that is make-believe, today we will be delving into some of the best circus stories out there while simultaneously coming up with the game plan for my own fake circus. My circus will not abuse elephants, nor will we hire so-called uh, quote-unquote freaks for a quote-unquote freak show that's degrading, it's embarrassing, it's disrespectful, and it's rude and mean, and you can't do that. I don't even know why that's a thing, okay? Um, and we won't have ridiculously outrageous stunts that kill people. Yes, we will have like trapeze artists and whatnot. There's gonna be an element of danger. The circus, <laughs> like the circus has to have you doing things that normal people can't really do. Otherwise, people would just stay home. But 
I like I don't want human cannonballs that's just too much okay but we are gonna have a good time and we're gonna be magical it's gonna be magic freaking city okay so I don't really have a plan I don't have a game plan for, for how today's episode is gonna go I'm just gonna roll with it uh you know I already did this so I kind of just want to speed this up as fast as I can I've got other stuff to do today <laughs> I don't have time to be recording this a second time so this is gonna be short I promise like I, I really promise anyway the first thing every good circus needs is a ringmaster I am bestowing this honor to the one and only Rihanna Riri the most savage actually I don't know why I said that she's probably not the most savage uh, yeah, also to get off topic for a second, the reason that this is not a video podcast today is because yesterday I tried to use flexi rods to curl my hair. I bought them off Amazon and I was like, this should be fun. I'm going to curl my hair and it didn't go well. So that's why I'm wearing a hat right now and why this is just going to be an audio only podcast. For those of you watching on YouTube, probably like this girl does not do video podcast like she said she would. I do video podcast just not every week sometimes it's purely audio and it's just it's for reasons like this i'm not camera ready okay back to the ringmaster i'm making rihanna my ringmaster uh because i feel like she come out onto the ring if that's what they call it i feel like that's what they call it can't say for sure but she come out onto the ring like a boss with a bad outfit and just be all magical and whatever and hype people up she's got that personality um and if she doesn't do a good job I got back up. I'm firing her and I'm hiring the tambourine guy from Postmodern Jukebox, Tim Kubart, to be the ringmaster. He's got killer tambourine skills, so I do not doubt him. Okay, now what I've done basically is I've set up this little thing where I tell you what I want in my circus and then I read something in, from a real circus. Like, so for example, I just told you that I wanted Rihanna to be my ringmaster slash Tim Kubart if she does a horrible job. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about an actual ringmaster. So let's see what the world of ringmastering has to offer. I'm about to tell you a little bit about Lee Darnell, a ringmaster, courtesy of this article on Cornwall Live by Gareth Bartley, 2018. So here we go. Um, now, earlier when I was recording this podcast, I accidentally said that Cornwall was the name of the circus. It's not. My bad. It's actually the name of the town, I feel like. It's the name of the place. <laughs> we'll say that. It's the name of the place that wrote this article. So, basically, Paulo Circus is again returning to the place Cornwall for the summer. And it has been doing that for years now. It was founded in Ireland in the early part of the 20th century and still travels the UK today. Uh, but the article is mostly about 28-year-old Lee Darnell, whose family has been in the circus, all the way back to 1816, at least, if not um, further. So uh, he actually left the circus field for a few years because he wanted to just be normal. <laughs> I can understand that after being in the circus all your life, you're probably gonna be like, uh, yeah, I want a desk job. <laughs> just, just to like get away from the craziness that is the circus. Um, it didn't work out though because he came back. <laughs> I can imagine that after getting used to the magicalness of the circus, take a shot every time I say the word magical, but I can imagine that after you get used to that, you don't like you want to experience something normal, you know, just to see what it's like. But at the same time, you find yourself coming back to your circus roots like, oh, I gotta have it. <laughs> you know, it's just too cool to give up. So he's been a ringmaster for 10 years now, but has been in the circus basically his whole life except for those few years that he left. <laughs> um, but what he says was so interesting to me because he said there's so much um, that's different. There's a lot less animals now and a lot more technology. And the reason for that is because, you know, back then people didn't bat an eye when you electrocuted an elephant. Like they just didn't care. There were probably some people, but as a whole, animal rights weren't seen um, and they weren't as prevalent as they are today. Now yeah <laughs> we've got some animal rights groups that take it a tad too far not calling any names but you know who you are if the shoe fits wear it <laughs> um but no i do agree that we shouldn't we shouldn't treat animals that way like i read one thing that said that they knocked out chimpanzees teeth for like to make sure that they didn't bite the trainers i just 
and with a crowbar. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I read. Um, I read something about horses too, and I can't remember what it said. I gotta go back and find that article. I didn't save it for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, and so because they have a lot less animals, and also because of today's generation, like we just have more, it takes more, I'll say it like that. It takes more to impress people today. And so back then you could like walk across the tightrope and people would be like, oh, genius, oh, wow, great stuff. But now people are like, eh, okay, cool, whatever. And they don't really wanna show up because like this guy said, you can go online and see this stuff. So you have to make people wanna get up out of their comfortable seats and come to the circus, like spend money and come out to the circus. And so that means that they have to rely on a lot more dangerous things. And a lot more can go wrong just because it takes more to give people that sense of magic than it did back in the day. Uh, one of the worst things he says he saw was a guy doing a trapeze and somersaulting off into the crowd and his brother was doing something similar to the trapeze when the straps broke off and he fell and landed in front of the ring, shattered his leg and bust his ribs. But the show must go on. <laughs> And what they did was they called the ambulance for him and they kept on moving. So it's a lot. I don't know how I feel about that. That just seems, <laughs> that seems like a, the kind of lifestyle. I don't know. It's so fast paced and it's so like, you have to be fearless when you do this kind of stuff. And so while I want to do aerial silks, I'll explain that later, what that really is in case you have no clue what I'm talking about. But I, I want to do stuff like that. Um, I just, I don't know how I feel about doing it to the point where it becomes life threatening. Like I can understand that with it comes a little bit of risk of injury and a little bit risk of danger. And that's what makes it so cool. But I also at the same time can't see myself doing it to the point where, you know, I'm so worried about the performance that I forget that, you know, my life is on the line. So it's just, it's really, it's something you really have to think about. And it makes you have respect for these people because they, you know, they risk a lot to entertain us. So back to my circus. The next thing that every circus needs are some good clowns. All right. Oh, something's burning my nose. I don't know what that is. Now a few clowns in my life. Um, there's some real bozos, but I feel like the audience would ultimately be disappointed by these people just as I have been time and time again because they like I said they are some real clowns um I don't mean <laughs> I don't mean the funny kind but yeah so we won't hire them instead we'll hire people like Jim Carrey one of the funniest people on the planet that's my opinion you have yours I have mine but I think that he's super hilarious he just doesn't even have to try hard he's just got comedy down packed it's in his blood you know but we can't have just him, we need more. So, um, I also thought about hiring Eric Stone Street, I think that's his name, don't quote me on that. But he plays Cam on Modern Family, he plays the character Cam. And um, Cam is a lot of things, he's a football coach, um, he is also a clown, <laughs> he's a clown for hobby. But I, I say I hire him because Eric plays the clown on a TV show. Perhaps he wouldn't mind playing a clown in real life as well. I don't know, that's not really a good reason, but I couldn't think of a lot of people that I wanted. Um, I also thought about Chris Rock and Eddie Murphy. I feel like they make good clowns. Um, as for a woman, I couldn't think of any women that I just really thought were just super freaking hilarious. I don't really keep up with comedians like that, to be real with you. But I said maybe Liza Koshy could be a clown because she's energetic and she's fun. She's super fun and energetic. Um, and I feel like she could really connect with kids. So now it's time for some clown knowledge. What I want to talk about is Steve Lowe. It's an article by Star Telegram. And it, he is a clown who ran for Congress. And he unfortunately passed away this year, I believe in February. May he rest in peace. So quickly, we're gonna talk a little bit about him because he's pretty cool. And the reason that I like him is because he's like a jack of all trades. 
he said that he didn't want to just be one thing, confined to one thing, and that's me really. I want to have many talents, <laughs> you know, I want to fly planes, I want to fly for real, um, be an aerialist, I want to be the first person to fly not to but through the sun. I want to have my own film production company, like, <laughs> just, I want to do so much with my life, I can't just ever stick to one thing, so that's why I really admire this guy. Um, it does not say how he died, but he was 53 years old. Um, he was from Camden, I don't know where that is, but yeah, it says that he was actually a clown for the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, and he did run for Congress but he he, he didn't make it anyway um his campaign website was pretty cool i like it because he was he had pictures of himself in full clown makeup and his slogan is the best it's aim high vote low because his last name is low that's really great <laughs> and i'm gonna read this word for word from the article it says the state reports that low launched his 2018 campaign saying they joke that the president and congress are all clowns well, in my professional opinion, they are the worst clowns I've ever seen. You go, Steve Lowe. You go. <laughs> and um, thank you for your time here on Earth with us. Uh, so a little bit more. Does anybody remember that one year where killer clowns were supposedly spotted all across the country? That, that was a really weird period in life. Yeah, I, I remember one specifically was said to have been seen about 10 to 15 miles from my town and a lot of people were freaking out about it on facebook there were so many posts like i'm gonna kill that clown if i see him like i'm staying in the house or like um i'm the clown <laughs> i even remember somebody said that they were the clown it was so funny another time i remember is when i had gone to see my aunt uh, where she lives she doesn't live where i live and i went outside with my brother to do something i think it was to walk the dog that's the only reason i can fathom we would have even been outside in the first place at night at her house um so i remember we were walking with huge sticks like they were huge oh my gosh we went like <laughs> we grabbed the biggest sticks we could find because we wanted to like bash brains if somebody approached us uh we were so terrified of, we were so terrified of spotting one of those clowns so we were just like extra vigilant of our surroundings. So super vigilant. Um, because a few days earlier, I'm saying um a lot, I know, it's fine. Because a few days earlier I had spotted, not spotted, I'd seen another hoax, hoax season post of clowns in her town. And I was like, I, you know, I kind of want to see the crown, the crown, the clown, but you know, is it worth being potentially stabbed over? Like I want to see it so I can say, so I can uh, tell to live the tale. Wait, did I say that right? <laughs> no, so I could say I lived to tell the tale. I was like, I know that didn't sound right. Um, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't worth it, so. The last thing that a circus really needs is a good act. I won't say the last thing, you need several things, but one of the last things that I'm gonna say is that you need a good act. I'm already gonna razzle dazzle them with my aerial silk skills performance but I can't do it alone and that's why I'm calling in for reinforcements Maddie Ziegler dancer for Sia former dance mom's kid sister of Mackenzie Ziegler she's amazing if you've never seen her dance go google it well you can bing it if you prefer or yahoo it or youtube it I don't know whatever it is that you have go look it up on the internet <laughs> because she's really cool and I just want her to dance around like she's lost her magical little mind and do some cool acro tricks you know hit them with that razzle dazzle she can swing from a chandelier it'll be so cool and of course I'd hire Troy and Belisario who got me into Ariel in the first place without her I probably would have never even known what it was so thank you for your random Instagram post Troy and blessed soul I had to scroll all the way down to 2016 to find pictures of her doing aerial stuff so I wonder if she still does it or if she just doesn't care to post it like you don't really have to post all of your life <laughs> on Instagram but with something as cool as that like I definitely post it um I also wonder if I just scrolled right past it I might have she might have posted some recently and I just like it went I don't know it slipped past me oh well so the last thing that I'm gonna say before we wrap this up is what is aerial silks in case you don't know 
Aerial Soaks is basically you have these two fabric things hanging from the ceiling. Um, and there are special gems that like really cater to this. I don't know if you can find this at a normal gem or not, but I know that there are specialty places that do. So you've got these two fabrics hanging from the ceiling. I don't really know what they're made out of. They're called silks, but I highly doubt they're actually made from silk. Don't think that would hold you up very well. And what it is, is you climb up these fabrics, like you can knot it at the bottom, I think beginners do that. And um, you can make like a hammock sort of thing. But mostly the hammocks are for yoga. And I'm not into yoga, I just wanna do the circus art performance. So you can climb it, um, you can perform tricks on it. It's like a bunch of acrobatic type stuff. It's kind of dancing, kind of acro -y. Uh You can do drops, um, holds, lifts. Those probably aren't the correct terms, but that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> now, is it dangerous? Yes, it is. You have to be careful when you do things like this because you can easily fall and break your neck. You have to have the core strength and that's one of the main reasons I want to do it is because I want to prove to myself that I can be athletic and that I can do something really cool and something outside of my comfort zone. I know that I do not have good core strength. I work out but I still like I cannot confidently say that I would um, I would give out within the first two minutes of trying aerial silks. So I really need to build up my stamina and my core strength, but you gotta have it because you have to hold yourself in the air. Um, you also can get burned by the fabric, so you have to make sure you wear pants that completely cover your legs, so like leggings. Um, and you don't want fabric to get caught in the material that you're hanging from, so it needs to be tight to your body. Um, you don't need to wear tank tops or anything because you need your back to be covered, you need your arms to be covered, your armpits, um, that kind of thing. And you need to tuck your shirt in because if you hang upside down, your shirt's definitely gonna fly over your head. So that's like the gist of it. Um, it but like I said, it is dangerous. You need to make sure you have a mat up under you so that if you fall, like you're not hitting concrete or anything like that, that would really suck for you. Uh, one thing I do wanna do, I wanna make sure I can find it. Okay, here it is. So this girl did a Prezi on the most dangerous drops of aerial silks. Her name is Olivia Bergman. Thank you, Olivia. I, when I recorded the podcast this first time, I had no idea what the name of this drop was and I was trying to think of it. So I Googled it and I found it so I can better explain it. But basically this type of drop is called the Kamikaze drop and it is known as uh, probably the most difficult and the most challenging drop in aerial silks. You can look it up, but I don't advise you watch a video. I did find a video where someone fell out of the kamikaze drop and it made my neck hurt, honestly. And I really hope that that person's okay. I don't know, because you can get seriously like hurt by this, seriously. Um, so when you... <laughs> If you do decide to look it up, you know, view, viewer discretion advice, I'll just say that. But the word kamikaze comes from the Japanese fighters, I don't know, I think they were in planes, and what they did was they would do these suicide attacks, so it would kill them, but it would also kill whoever they were attacking too, so that's where the word comes from. Um, and that tells you right there that this is not something that you really want to play with, this is very serious. Uh, Alright, now the thing about this drop is that you have to have so much precision in the way that you wrap yourself in, this, in the fabric. Because there's two wraps that you have to do. I kind of want to explain this. Um, so if I'm not explaining it right and you know what aerial silks, aerial silks is and you can explain this better, like feel free. <laughs> to let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. If not, uh, you can email me, certainly, because I don't wanna spread the wrong information. So with this, you wrap yourself twice. And the thing about it is, the second wrap, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing, if you wrap it the wrong way, you basically undo the first wrap. And you need both of these wraps to successfully perform this drop without falling onto your neck, okay? 
when you drop, you want to still have yourself caught in the fabric. It's really dangerous. It's really cool looking, but it, you know, it's really not worth it in the grand scheme of things. This kamikaze drop will not add any value to your life whatsoever. So I strongly advise against it. But anyway, to each their own. Um, you gotta, she says, you have to understand the timing and the mechanics of the drop, maintain consistency and have body awareness. You do not want to miscalculate that second wrap because if you do it the wrong way, um, I've heard someone say that if you wrap it like the wrong number of times, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but if you, basically if you do the second wrap wrong, you'll undo the first one and when you drop, you'll have nothing to catch you. So it's, whew, it's a lot to, it's a lot to think about. Uh, there's another drop. This one's called the corkscrew drop. She says it's not as risky as the kamikaze, which actually I've heard someone call it the double kamikaze. I don't know if that's the same or if it's different, but either way, it's still kamikaze. So I assume it's just as dangerous. Um, but the corkscrew drop is similar to the double star drop because after spinning through the air like a cork, the aerialist drops into the position of an ankle hang causing a lot of force on the body and it requires a lot of ankle strength and a solid core for a quick torso rotation which I don't have <laughs> uh, the dead man's drop this one she says isn't as infamous as the others but it seems just as scary the drop starts off standing and after falling backwards the aerialist finishes in an ankle hang I can see why that's scary I don't know if I trust myself to hang by my ankle <laughs> it requires both spatial and body awareness fearlessness and balance of weight. So here are some things that she provided to keep you safe. Uh, yeah, practice the wraps on the ground first. Always have a spotter. Know the sequence for the pre-wrap. Use crash mats and train your body to get in the habit of using proper technique and alignment. Thank you, Olivia, for explaining that because I never could have. Anyway, that is it for this episode. I hope that this... Uh, <laughs> gave you some insight on circus artistry. It's not a whole, whole lot. And this is a really short episode. Like I said, I couldn't really do all that I wanted to and say all that I wanted to because I already recorded this and it erased itself. And so hopefully it doesn't do that a second time. That'll really suck. Otherwise, we just won't have a podcast episode for this week. Um, this episode didn't really have like a huge point other than I just wanted to talk about something that I love. Um, so... I've got things to do now. <laughs> I'll catch you on the flip side. Two weeks from now, I will have my first special guest joining me on the show. So watch out for that. Next Wednesday, however, it's just me. You just get me and that is all. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. This has been the Completely Random Foolishness Podcast. Tell your mom I said hi. <laughs>